All right, everybody, welcome to Powder 7 World Headquarters. I'm Matt. And I'm Alex. And today to Gear Show and Tell, we brought bindings. Yeah. These are, this is the Marker Duke PT-16. And I have the Solomon Shift 13. So we're playing with some hybrid backcountry resort 50-50 bindings today. Also yeah. known as free ride bindings mm -hmm. by some people. So what's awesome about this category of bindings is these are true 50-50 resort backcountry pieces. So mm -hmm. when you descend, whether it's touring or in bounds, you get a full alpine binding and everything that that includes like elastic travel, um, all the safety standards of alpine bindings come in these guys. But then you're also able to um, skin uphill with tech fittings um, with both of these bindings. So these are great products for people looking to have one setup for touring and resort performance. Um, or if maybe they're just getting into touring and they want one thing instead of multiple things. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, why don't you take us away with your intro to the shift? Yeah, um, I've been a long time shift owner. I got them shortly after they came out. I will say for the record, shifts kind of pioneered this category of binding. Um, so it's tried and true. The shift is just really easy to use. It's a bit lighter than the Duke as well, but it was the binding that got me into the backcountry. Um, and I think it's a great kind of first time backcountry binding because when you click in, you know you're gonna have that same reliable Alpine downhill binding feel. Um, with kind of traditional tech bindings, those tend to feel a little bit more rigid and static, a little less responsive because of they typically don't have elastic travel, uh, like Matt was saying earlier. Traditional Alpine bindings will have a little bit of room for your boot to kind of move around in there and kind of absorb some of the inconsistencies in the snow, kind of like suspension on a mountain bike. So your boot and binding are absorbing some of those vibrations, not passing them up to you, giving you a smoother ride. Um, tech bindings are totally cool, much lighter, more efficient on the uphill, but definitely do feel a little bit different on the downhill. So this is a great option for someone wanting to keep that kind of traditional binding feel. But yeah, the Solomon Shift I like a lot because it shifts very easily. You just move that tab to get the tech toes to pop out, and then you'll flip up this little tab that says ski, press on it. Easier with boots on in yeah. the real world. For the record, I do <laughs> stomp on that typically. Um, and that locks the brakes up out of place. Then when you're ready to ski down, you flip that tab, very scary sounding tab back into ski mode and then just lock the toes back into place. I kind of like to pinch them and then push that back up. Lock the toe lever down. And then you're in ski mode. It's as easy as that. I As easy as that. It seems like a lot, but once you get the hang of the transitions, it goes by pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, any concerns uh, about the shift? I know some people who have used it have had various qualms with it over the years. Can you sure. speak to any of those? Alex? Sure, for sure. I had a couple of instances as well. One of the major things you'll hear about, um, and this is a big difference between the Duke and the ship for sure, the shift has a manual toe height adjustment. So you can see this little screw here. Depending on what type of boot you have, the, the toe AFD will kind of rise up and down. And you do want that to be pretty snug against your boot. Um, and it is pretty finicky, especially compared to some other traditional Alpine bindings. Um, so it does require a little bit of, you know, extra attention to make sure it's set up correctly. Um, so if you go to a reputable shop um, like us, we would be able to get that set up for you totally fine, especially now that the ship's been around for a few years, we're kind of getting used to how to set that up. But that is something to keep an eye out for. Um, if you're swapping boots a lot, like if you have your Alpine boot and then you have a touring boot with a different sole, this would need to be adjusted every time. Whereas with the Duke, that's gonna be an automatic adjustment. So it's a little bit more user-friendly that way. But if the toe height is not adjusted correctly, you can have like some pre-release issues. I've had my own famous day at Wolf Creek. It was like super deep and we were out on our second run and I just like popped off a little roller and then just flew out of my bindings. But that was a total user error problem. My toe height was not set up correctly. So you just wanna make sure that everything's kind of dialed ahead of time and then you'll be totally good. Um, yeah, and if you ever feel like your toe is kind of sliding, it almost feels like it's wiggling up back and forth, that's a good sign to get that checked out and make sure everything's looking gravy. Yes. Yeah. Nice. I'll try to be as elegant with my demonstration of the Duke. Uh, so here we are, this, is, this would be your ski mode. Again, it looks kind of intimidating. But like anything, once you're used to this process, um, it's not so bad. So if you're gonna slide into uh, hike mode to go uphill, flip this toe piece forward. It does have a mode here where you can leave it in this position um, if you wanna kind of inexplicably carry this weight down here uh, or go on a short skin 
have them clicked back up or whatever. I usually take it all the way off, throw it in my backpack. So now you've got a pretty regular looking uh, tech touring toe. And then like we mentioned, talking about the shift, um, auto adjusting AFD uh, toe height. So this binding is compatible with Alpine boots, grip walk and touring boots, as long as they have enough of a toe lug. Um, no shark nose on either of these bindings. Um, and with the Duke, you don't have to mess with the toe height at all. So that's super nice. Uh, back here in the heel piece, if you're a fan of marker bindings, you might recognize this big burly heel piece is from the Jester. Big spring inside. Uh, that's specific to the 16. So then the Duke 12, the reason it sheds a bunch of weight over the 16 is it's got a Squire heel piece. Um, here you're in ski mode. So if you're gonna go to hike mode, flip this little, flip this little lever back, and then obviously again, a little easier on snow to step on, but there you go. You've got a climbing riser, singular, just like the shift. Um, and I've used both of these bindings a lot. I will admit, <laughs> although I prefer the Duke, uh, the climbing lever on the Duke when you're out in the mountains can be a lot more annoying to engage. Another one of those things that just taking some time and practice to smooth out your program um, works itself out but I have to admit it or Alex will point it out later in this video. So then you're at the top of your run, we're stoked, uh, you're down into ski mode, and then in your toe piece, you just pretty much reverse engineer the same process from before, and boom, we're ready to ski. So big advantage to the Duke, to me, and I think um, it gets to the auto adjusting toe height and this big jester heel piece, um, to me, this binding feels, instills more confidence in me for really charging hard. And sometimes for me, that includes probably some pretty bad skiing. Um, I get really wound up and I'm excited, right? And you want to charge, charge, charge. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's rough. Um, the point for me is that I feel really confident that the Duke PT is going to facilitate um, big errors, whether I land them or triple tomahawk. Um, or whatever, um, I think that's my my big vote for the Duke is why I'll carry a little bit of extra weight uphill um, is because I get that, for me, full on resort feel in a little bit heavier binding. You know, heavier bindings are annoying to lug uphill, but for skiing down, feeling that little bit of extra heft for powering through crud, stomping landings uh, is pretty nice. So uh, I like them both, but that's my Duke PT. Let's state your case. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a tough, tough rally. But I do think, I totally agree with your point. Like, you want to feel like you trust your bindings. So if having a beefier binding makes you feel that much more confident diving into a, a gnarly line or hitting a hit, then by all means, go for it. Um, I prefer a little bit more of an efficient way up. Um, I'm doing a lot of like longer tours, maybe not like skiing, skiing like super gnarly lines all the time, at least with my shift set up. Um, so I'm much happier with something that's much more efficient. I also have a tendency to lose things and drop things. And the idea of a removable toe piece is my nightmare, especially in the backcountry. So I think um, that being said, if your shift is set up properly, um, like I'm a fairly aggressive skier, but I'll, I'll be honest, like I do weigh a little bit less than like some of the other guys here at the shop, but I'm a fairly aggressive skier and I don't have issues with the shift when it's set up correctly. Um, I understand where like, you know, some folks who have, they do way more or spending a lot of time in the air and spinning and things like that may want something a little bit burlier, but I think that goes for Alpine bindings too. Um, a lot of those people aren't going to want to be on a like an 11 din binding or so, they're gonna be on a Jester or a Look Pivot 18 or an STH, something like that. So the same rules for Alpine bindings translate to these kind of hybrid bindings as well. I do think a lot of people will be happy with the shift, um, but I understand where the Duke, Duke has its place. Yeah. Totally, I think the bottom line, we, we like to bicker about this one quite a bit, but the bottom <laughs> line is, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time on the shift and it's worked great for me. Um, I think both bindings do what they say they will do mm -hmm. for the people that they're serving, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think it's a little bit of personal preference on uh, if you want a little bit more heft or um, that kind of efficiency and a little bit uh, less weight. Totally. I do want to shout out the um, cast system though as well. Mm -hmm. um, so. We don't. Um, we can help you mount cast systems and things like that. It is basically kind of a modification to the look pivot system for a look pivot 18 or 15. Basically, it is a similar system where you remove the pivot toe piece and swap it for a tech toe, and then you can put your pivot toe piece back when you're ready to ski down. And then you're torn on a pivot, which is really sweet. We have a lot yeah. of 
diehard pivot fans here. So if you love the way a pivot rides and skis, there is an option for a 50-50 setup for you too. Yeah, and especially with an emerging, like an emerging category of products, you know, I, I aggressively called out some of the, some complaints with the shift over the years. <laughs> I also completely fully left my topies at the bottom of a line when I went to skin up for a second <laughs> lap and that didn't go that well. Um, so, and then, you know, cast is awesome. You ski in a pivot and I know people have talked about random things they found with those. Mm -hmm. So with currently in the market with any piece of gear in this category, you're going to find some finicky little things. Um, and I think they all do what they say they will. And there's a lot of figuring out what you need as uh, a skier for your wants and needs. Totally. If you feel like you're still a little unsure and need some help kind of deciphering this situation, or maybe you're like, what the heck? Why do I need a 50-50 binding anyway? I want a tech binding. Feel free to shoot us an email and give us a call. We're always super happy to chat about nitty gritty gear stuff like this. So. Yeah, and we'll do some more chatting about it on our YouTube channel. So hit that subscribe button down in the description. You'll be the first to know when we pit more bindings and skis and soft goods and everything against each other. We've got a full buyer's guide. Um, so whether or not you subscribe or buy from us, we hope you have a great winter and stay safe in the backcountry.